Yes. We are going to open up our Q&A section of your VIP experience. So if you have any question, please go ahead and raise your hand and we will pass the mic on over to you. Does anyone want to start? Mm -mm. I argue, I am curious what your go-to song is when you are feeling down, out, laid on the floor. Like, what's the song you sing? For me, sometimes it's No Weapon, and sometimes it's a lot of the, your songs, Kurt. But what, what's the song that either of you sing when you just need to be your own help? For us, I agree, it's a lot of her songs. <laughs> <laughs> watch out, watch out, watch out, man. Don't start that, don't start that. No. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, good to see y'all. Hey, man, y'all look good. God knows what he's doing. He don't make no mistake. Bam! You must be born again. All right. Hey, listen, real quick, I just wanted to ask. Yeah, yeah. B-A-M, uh, Born Again Ministry. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, there it is. It's, it's an acronym and it's bad, though. No. no, but real quickly, um, uh, my apologies to everyone. Uh, I was born uh, November 3rd, so this is like a birthday treat, you know, celebration. So I just wanted to know if, if real quickly we could just get uh, just one stanza of uh, happy birthday, Kurt Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> <laughs> 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 He can do anything, that's what I'm saying. Watch out now. <laughs> I, Kirk, I just want to tell you thank you. I've had a walk with the Lord, and I 
uh, listening to your music throughout the years, and uh, God has really used you and your music to heal me in so many ways. And I don't really have a question other than to just say thank you for standing, standing in the gap, or uh, healing for the people and myself. In spite of me, thank you. In spite of me, thank you very much. Oh, really? Hi, Patrick. My name is Sharia. And this is a little surreal for me because I grew up watching and listening to you and Karen when you would sing with Kiki and you would do the runs and she would respond. I would do it with her. I can't sing, but <laughs> I, I just admire the, te the technicality and the anointing that's on top of it. And I might not have the skill to sing, but I have the ear to appreciate it. And I appreciate it on a whole different level. So that can be heard. Listen. My sin, talk about my sin. You can't I was in college. <laughs> Maybe I don't stop preaching. <laughs> Karen, I want to know, what is it like watching your baby have a baby and becoming a grandma? Oh, oh it's a joy. It is very encouraging. I'm grateful that God gave me such a beautiful daughter who loves the Lord. Peter never gave me like, any problems. She had her dad problems. You know? <laughs> he was very protective over her. But she's just this beautiful child to see, to have a daughter. I hear many other uh, women saying things about, you know, how problem, how many problems they have with their daughters. So I'm grateful that God has given me a daughter that loves God. And seeing her just blossom. And, when I was eight, when she was 18, when she became 18 and she was on the road track, she said, Ma, I got it, I got it. So she's always been advanced. So I'm, I'm just grateful to have a daughter. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay. Thank you for the uh, oh, yeah. place. Okay, so, uh, yeah, no, I'm going to start with Tamara. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Karen. I'm so sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> no, we need you to be careful. I know how to do care in my care. No, <laughs> so, 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 so I'm sorry, I know who I'm talking to, but I like you and, and everything that you've been and everything I see just outside of you taking me acting. So I just want to say I can be doing that. But to my brother Kirk, because uh, I love you. So tonight my wife been holding this my wife's been holding this against me for I don't know how long, not against me, she's been keeping this front. I had no idea what was about to happen tonight. She just said we're going somewhere. So I'm gonna tell you now, all y'all gonna have me crying. So uh, <laughs> that said, I just have one question for you. Do you have any further intentions of creating music with Mr. West? Oh I don't know. Uh, you know, because I think that, that wherever the Lord leads him. You know, just how, how the ways of God sovereign to the levels. I, yes, I, I, I don't kind of have a mindset of being strategic, of being intentional, of working with mainstream artists. It just has to be the right moment, the right time, and and the moment that makes sense. I think a, a moment that makes sense for me, and a moment that makes sense for them, is because if not, then it's it's almost like kind of what is the agenda. You know, and there are many times that. I've had to humbly decline a certain request because it just doesn't make sense. And, you know, it's, I wouldn't be able to serve them the best and maybe the message in the movement that they're behind doesn't really align with what I would be able to stand for in its totality. So, you know, and I stumble in that. I fail, you know, there are times you have to learn by trial and error because, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting, most of us take baths and take showers and we're able to do it privately. So no one can critique what we look like. But when you have to take a bath and you have to be washed publicly and everybody judges 
you know, what kind of soap you use, what the temperature is. It can be very difficult. And so when you're in these public spaces and you're a babe in Christ or trying to be in Christ, you have to walk and stumble in front of everyone to critique and judge. You know, I don't know if we would have the same level of respect for David if we saw David in his life in front of us. I mean, think about it. Before David uh, slept with Sheba, David had many wives. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? David, David had many wives, you know? Solomon had many wives. I mean, if we saw them in real time, would we call these men godly? Amen. Mm -hmm. it, 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 was, it was a question. It was a question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, no. <laughs> you know, so, you know, you know, it, it is, it is, it is, interesting when we see the Bible come to life that we begin to time a lot of our heroes that we have in the Mount Rushmore faith, you know, and we have a chance to see them doing it in real time, you know. Moses parted the Red Sea, but didn't make it in Canaan. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, you know, you know, you know, it's, it's just so difficult, and, and I think that the lack of empathy that, that engages in Christianity has always been confusing to me. It's, it's been very confusing how Christians would eat our own. Mm -hmm. That is so difficult to me. When the Bible, our heroes are murderers, right. they're adulterers, and they're right. liars, That's and they're right. thieves, but they're our right. heroes. We quote them. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi. Yeah. But you can go against it with prayer. And you can be a leader as opposed to being a father. Because of what purpose that you have. You got purpose inside of it. And I promise you, establish that relationship with God. I don't know if you're a member of a church or get you make sure you're surrounding yourself. Surrounding yourself with uh, young people that know God. You might have to do a track record. And you're protecting your salvation. You're protecting your peace. You're protecting your atmosphere. So make sure you establish a relationship with God and have a prayer life. Okay. Hi, Kurt. How are you? Hi. My name is Whitney. And uh, one of my questions for you is how is it that you work with a lot of different artists, um, both secular and gospel. You pull from a lot of different influences. How is it that you are able to stay uniquely curved and be so unapologetic about it? And then the question that I would have for both of you is, what is the, how, how do you minister to people with just your life? First, first, uh part of the question that I don't know. I have no idea. And I've learned to be okay with it. I've learned to be okay with that it is past my own sinful self and my own sins and mistakes and failures. It is just the kindness and grace of God that He has chosen to to use me as a basis that I don't even understand, I don't feel equipped in. So I don't really know. I don't really know how this happens and how that happens. I don't know. I'm just grateful that he 
find forgiveness and kindness to use me and mm-hmm. me and, 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 you know, and I'm not trying to be super deep. I really don't know. I have you no know, like I, it freaks me out sometimes, you know, people, you know, that are like uh well, I didn't say that because they may just go against the thing we're trying to talk about. Mm-hmm. It would have been what I was about to say, but you know, it's just, you know, you know, just trying to figure it out. And then the second question was how do you minister to people with just your life? Because, I mean, I know you guys obviously have a huge public platform and you guys sing and stuff, but, like, when you're just out and about, like, grocery shopping or whatever, and people, you might see somebody who might need a word of encouragement, how do you find, how do you do that? Gotcha. What person? Oh, this, I just try to be nice. And I think that that's one of the great testaments, you know, is because there's not a lot about Jesus in the Word that most people have not heard. But a lot of people have not seen the Jesus that they've heard about. Amen. And so I think kindness is one of the greatest witnesses of the heart of Jesus. And just to be kind of then if there's more conversation, then I think that I always try to leave with being honest. And try to be honest about, you know, that I'm like, um, uh, I was with a person that everybody knows the other day. And, and he came, and, I, and he brought up that the person who came up to my house and met me because he was a brand new Christian. I said to him, he said, what he loved, I didn't even know he loved what I said, but I said to him, if you're looking for a perfect Christian, I'm not your guy. And he said that made him build them, that, 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 that made him take off any trepidation, any that's because there is something about American Christian culture that you automatically think that there's a perfectionistic Role and persona that you have to wear. And that can be, I'm not too jacked up to wear that role. <laughs> and I'll let you know, I am, I am one of them. <laughs> I'm that one that Jesus went after. You told me that, 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 that one that left the 99. <laughs> I'm that one, you know. And, and every day of my life, I'm that one. You know, I don't deserve what I can. I, I deserve more than what I should have. Man. When it comes to wrath when it comes to judgment. The, 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 the grace, and so I try to give that grace to other people because grace has been given. Hallelujah. Don't say that. I mean, um, no, I, I agree. Even when he mentioned that I'm not that perfect one. I'm not. And people need to know that. Yes. You know, we haven't been perfect. Even though you see us up here, but we haven't been perfect. But I do have a testimony. Watch out now. To show you how we strive towards perfection. Mm-hmm. Amen. And knowing that the grace of God. And I watched Kurt. He's such an example. I watched him being so I watched him just people speak to him, they're afraid. He'll reach out and touch him. <laughs> Who does that? And some of these artists today, they knew all they just they just came up. And they got nice and not kind. But Kurt Franklin is truly an example. You need to do workshops on the yeah. <laughs> new artist development. <laughs> She's getting paid to see that. <laughs> you can't say how like that, you can't be <laughs> uh, what, what, what advice would you have for a singer? Or someone who's aspiring to sing, right? Aspiring to sing the gospel? Or just aspiring to sing? Singing in general, just in this industry, like what advice would you give? I would advise 
um, for you to have a full understanding of the climate. Because I think that people go into some situations, even marriage, uh, buying a house, doing different things, but a lot of times people don't consider the climate mm -hmm. of things when they have these considerations. Sometimes, it's, it's my, my mantra is one that was kind of pattern to Jesus. When, when Jesus finished feeding the 5,000, and my man wanted to follow Jesus because he was popular at that very moment. And Jesus said, okay, you want to follow me right now because I'm hot. Mm -hmm. I just fed all these people. Everybody know my name. They know more than God. He said, but boxes have holes. Verse but basically, I'm hot right now, but tonight I don't even know what I'm sleeping. Yeah. So he was trying to encourage people to consider the cost. Right. And sometimes you got to bust the bubble so that people have a realistic understanding of what they're trying to get into. And I think that if you want to have a career in music right now, you've got to have a realistic understanding of the club. The, the music industry is different than it's ever been. Uh, there's no more power in radio. TikTok is the new radio. Yep. And that and, and so that makes it skew a lot of like a, a little bit younger and a little bit more gimmicky. And so you have to be uh, comfortable with whatever audience that you build. If you really wanted to build a real audience, then sometimes your concerts may be three, five hundred people, twenty people, thirty people. But you have to be able to make a decision, I'm doing this because I love to do it. Mm -hmm. And just because you may not be doing it as a full-time career, but that's how you feed your kids and family, it doesn't mean that you still can't find passion and purpose in is that to that own self be true. And if you find joy in what you do, then those that are predestined to be the audience for you, they'll come. Yes. And they'll find it. But you gotta super circle. You gotta post. You gotta post. You gotta post, 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 post. <laughs> and so if that ain't you, it's because we know a lot of people, we know a lot of great singers, but because they're not committed to social media, it doesn't work. Because they don't understand, like, why well, I got always posting because that's what it is. You know, you got to catch the algorithms. You got to find what the algorithm is. I mean, it's, just, it's, it's, it's just a different world now. And so you've got to be committed to that space. And so it's, it's difficult. It's possible. But it is more difficult than ever. To the point, I'll say this to the point. Record labels won't even sign an artist if they don't have a follow on social media. Wow. They don't even say mm, 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 you have a certain amount of views and followers. It's because they can't do your job better than you can. You are the you are now the most powerful person in marketing you. Wow. They don't have the power. You do. Mm -hmm. And so they're gonna look at your numbers and determine the baby inside of you. That's different. And then the other question was, but the jet three. What I'm sorry. What country or city have you been to that you just love? Uh, Praise and worship, they were all my own. Probably, um, we went over to South Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah, they just had a, South Africa and Brazil. Brazil mm -hmm. was, oh my God. That was a whole you know, other dimension of worship over there. I mean, it was like, oh, I don't have to. Work hard on you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they were just so thirsty and ready. I think Brazil, I was like. Now, I have to tell you all about Brazil. I've been in Brazil too. Because, you know, they are from the diaspora of, of our people, right? So, you know, they, they, they come from Africa to sit. They are very beautiful people. <laughs> and their worship is a little more... <laughs> Body movement. So you can imagine being a young, a young man with a young band going to, to Brazil and the church can be full of people that move differently than they do in America. And my wife is a church. The, 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 a lot of the clothes are more fitting. And the work, and it's like as a young man, it's like <laughs> so, you know, you're trying to think about Jesus, but I'm, no, it's because again, there are people, and they're beautiful, and they worship very. Like, I don't know if you see videos of people that worship in Africa. It's a lot more, you know what I mean? It's a lot more. So you go, oh God, 
It's an awesome spot. It's a, if Tammy went with me the first time, Tammy goes inside, Tammy's like... Hmm. Yeah, so anyway. They go with the baby! <laughs> hey, Kurt. What up, King? Pat, Pat's good lady. Richmond, California. It's just that every pastor had that pastor. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, it's a small church in the backdrop. Old school. My first time seeing you minister publicly it was in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, I think it was Bishop Brandon's church in 98. It might have been 98. We were out there for the conference. Anyway, it was a true, uh, they had a tremendous impact on everybody, including myself. I was just starting out of the ministry. My question is, my question is, is with small church that do mega ministry, when was the last time you stopped by a small church and just ministered to a small church and do the word? Do you miss it? That's my question. I miss it so bad. I miss it so bad. You know, I, that, that's who I am. That's where I get from. I think we all miss it. And, you know, you know it's, I think that the capitalism of Western Christianity has kind of caused all of us to have a more desensitized approach to who we are and how we try to connect with heaven. So, you know, um, if I don't get to as often as I love to, but I tell you what I do. And it, it's going to be very weird. Often I go to my old neighborhood, and sometimes at night I'll drive and park in front of old churches that I used to play in. I just sit on my uh, hood. I'm talking about even now, 2023. I sit on my hood and just play old gospel songs and just look at the church and remember when I was a little boy in front of these churches. And I do that often. I do that often. And so I miss it, and I miss those moments. And man, I would do anything with the kids. What would it take for me to get you to stop by this small church in Richmond? <laughs> <laughs> sure it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I see you. I know what to do. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but it's kind of possible. And, and, and let's, let's see what the winds of heaven do and which direction they blow, because I would love to serve in any capacity. So, but that was good to work it Hello, my name is Orpa. Miss Orpa, I'm going to let you make the last one because they got it. Hello, so this question is for the both of you. Um, songwriting, how does it, how, what's your process? Does it just come to you in a dream? I never wanted, I wanted to ask them how they ever done that. Do you have a question for her before I have Do you have a question for her? I live in New York. Okay. I live right next to you. Okay, well, you hold on here. So, right for me is the greatest witness in truth for me. I'm like, this is Whenever I've had a person, I can be a dad. Because like y'all, yeah. I've seen sometimes some the whole, negative yeah. things when it comes to Western Christianity. It can make you, you know, just a lack of love and compassion, sometimes biblical illiteracy. Sometimes people want the Santa Claus Jesus than the, more than the Jesus of the cross. Mm -hmm. You know, I get a little, you know, just kind of lost in all of it. Uh, the songwriting for me reminds me of the existence of God because I'm so clear that it ain't me doing it. Like, I know that ain't me doing it. Like, like when songs come, I'm like, how did that come? And, 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 and they come in multiplicity of ways. Uh, Stoplights, gas stations, in the bed when I'm asleep, in the shower, on the toilet. I mean, you know, just, I mean, you know, changing, yeah. changing clothes. I mean, it's just, it's random. And I know that it's bad because I'm not that good. I have no, I have no blueprint. I have no, you know, certain way of doing it. I'm just grateful that. God still feels my pain with it. Mm. I'm just thankful. I'm so thankful. And your question? Hi, my name is Courtney. Nice to meet you both. Um, and it was basically the same thing. I was thinking about the old ways, like he'll take the pain away, the storm is over now. 
you know, you are. And when you were making those hits, like, what was your creative process like? So it's, it's like around the same question. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Like, there's nothing deep and dope that I'm doing. Yeah. Like, I'm not, you know, like the temperatures in that set at 60 degrees. And it's 3.45 in the evening. And I have this whole sweat on. And a pen that Mandela gave me before he died. He said, take this pen. <laughs> like, I don't you know, it's, it's just, it's just random. It really is. And, like, I get emotional thinking about it. I, but because, like, it don't make sense to me. Songwriting don't make sense to me. It really don't. I, I know that the Lord is real do this gift of songwriting because I am so far, like I'll be honest with you, and I, and, I, and I say this to all of you, you know, I was a young man writing a lot of these songs, mm -hmm. and you know, my, my, my life is not always aligning with God's heart, you know, and I, you know, you know, when the scripture says all of the sin, you know, and a lot of times, you know, these songs are coming in the midst of, you know, a, a life that ain't always, they hadn't always been pleasing to me. And, 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 and I still can't believe that he was still, you know, on me so always in the middle of always not being his best child. It is amazing. It is amazing grace. Thank you. And also, my mom wanted to know if you could write the words to her, to her book on fatherhood. Where you going? She's not here yet. She's on the way. But she did. <laughs> her name is Sterling Patrick. Okay, I'm gonna look for it. You better put your mom on. <laughs> <laughs> They take it head, take it head. Oxygen. Yes, sir. Because these women are killing people in every city. <laughs> they have warrants. <laughs> get, get, get it, get it, get it. Get it. They are leaving. I'm telling you, we have to have oxygen. Tonight, you will see oxygen tanks. Y'all, the Clark sisters Woo. are double assassins. Woo. Yeah, I'm telling everybody, this is cute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, these parts of the problem. First lady. Y'all have to smell bio free because the parts of the problem. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my God